Now that you understand and tested all electronic components of your quadcopter, it is finally time to put it all together. In this video, I will explain you how to build this small and light quadcopter yourself with the necessary electronic schematics and all components. Remember that all components and programs are fully hackable, meaning that you can adapt anything you want and create a totally different quadcopter. Putting all separate circuits explained in the previous videos together results in this schematic, which gives you all information necessary to start building the quadcopter. The thicker lines represent the high current wires. One component you did not yet see is the barometric BMP280 sensor. This component will be used in a later video to enable you to automatically hover your quadcopter. We will nonetheless already install this component now. The wiring on the schematic will be integrated in a printed circuit board or PCB. This is nothing more than alternating layers of insulating material and conductive copper. Inside your PCB, all necessary connections between the components are provided in the form of conductive traces. This means that most wires in the schematic of your quadcopter electronics are already integrated in the upper quadcopter frame. The color of the traces corresponds with the color of the wiring in the schematic. Notice that the power traces are much wider than the signal traces to allow for higher currents to flow. Now these are all components necessary for your quadcopter build. Let's start by building the lower quadcopter frame, which will hold the most expensive components the ESCs and motors. First, you will install the frame spacers and the ESCs. As highlighted in the illustration, you need to make sure the black wires from the ESCs are always positioned towards the inside of the frame. This will ensure a correct motor rotation direction later on. Start by installing the frame spacers. Use 4 M3 fastening screws to attach the frame spacers to the lower quadcopter frame. Just position the screws under the quadcopter frame and tighten the frame spacers manually until they are firmly attached to the frame. These 30 mm long frame spacers will ensure the rigidity of the quadcopter as well as the connection with the upper frame. Now continue by positioning the electronic speed controllers or ESCs. As explained previously, make sure the black ESC wires are always positioned towards the inside of the frame. Cut the three wires that will feed the three phases of the brushless motor to the appropriate length. Notice that you should never cross the wires when soldering to ensure a correct rotation direction for the motor. Now strip the end of the three wires such that you can solder them to the frame. Make sure the strip part is long enough for easy soldering. Push the red wire through the hole of the frame and turn the frame upside down to start soldering. The true hole soldering you have to do with the ESC wires should be pretty straightforward and a good exercise for what will come next. Now solder all four ESCs to the quadcopter frame. The ESCs used for this project are 6 amps ESCs from Hobby King with a battery eliminator circuit or BEC which will allow you to feed the TNC at a constant voltage of 5 volts. Notice once again the black ESC wires are positioned towards the inside of the frame, just as they should. For the next part, you will attach the motors to the quadcopter frame and solder the wires coming from the three motor faces to the lower quadcopter frame. Once again, the motor wires should not cross each other to ensure a correct motor orientation. For this project, I will use 5000 kV motors from GE PRC. These motors have a maximum load current of 6 amps, which corresponds nicely to the maximum load current of the ESC. Unpack the motors. They are made of high quality materials and come with the necessary screws for attaching both the motor to the frame and the propeller to the motor. You can cut the connecting piece from the wire, as you will not need it for this project. Cut the wire from the motors to an appropriate length before stripping them. Be mindful that the motor wires are very thin. Do not cut them too short, because stripping these very thin wires can be challenging and might require a few tries. Once you strip the wire, 
push it through the hole and turn around the quadcopter frame. Soldering the wire from the backside is once again very easy and should not present any issues. When all three motor wires are soldered to the frame, you can fasten the motor to the frame with the screws provided by the motor manufacturer. Make sure you use the shortest 4mm screws. The screws should never touch the motor windings, as it will cause short circuits and damage to the motor. So when you attach the screws, always make sure there is enough space between the screw and the winding. Now select a propeller to put on top of the motor. The leading edge of your propeller should always correspond to the motor rotation direction. So verify that you will attach the correct propeller to each motor. The correct rotation direction is highlighted on the frame as well. Slide the propeller over the motor axis. Use the two longest 8mm screws to firmly fasten the propeller to the rotor of the motor. Once again, the screws should not touch the inner motor windings. Because this is motor 3, it will turn counterclockwise when you have soldered the wires in the correct order. When all four motor wires are soldered to the frame and all motors and propellers are installed, we will take a small break and have a look at the motor rotation directions. As you already noticed from the schematic, no two adjacent motors turn in the same direction. The quadcopter would not be controllable when two adjacent motors would turn in the same direction, as the resulting torque cannot be counteracted. When slowing down the recording of the moving motors, you will notice that motors 2 and 4 turn in a clockwise direction. Motors 1 and 3 on the other hand balance this out by turning in the opposite counterclockwise direction. For the final part of the construction of the lower quadcopter frame, you will add some things to help the quadcopter be as robust as possible. First, you will add a cable protector to protect the ESC wires that need to go to the upper quadcopter frame. Cut the cable protector you will use to the correct length. A good idea is also to cut out some parts on the side of the cable protector as well, as it will allow you to run the cables to the ESC and frame without crushing them. Now turn the ESC cables around the frame spacers, such that the final cable length corresponds with the length you need to connect the cables to the upper quadcopter frame. Slide the cable protector over both the cables and the frame spacer. Do this for the four sides. The lower quadcopter frame suddenly looks a lot more organized. Use four cable ties to attach the ESCs and cables to the quadcopter frame. This will help to avoid cable damage by the propellers or when you crush your quadcopter, something that will happen inevitably. Make sure you cut off the cable tie such that it does not block the rotation of the propeller. When you attached all four cable ties, let's take a moment to appreciate the work you have done so far. Now let's move on with attaching the receiver to the frame. The receiver can be positioned in the front of the quadcopter. The two holes in the middle of the frame should be used to fasten the receiver to the frame with another cable tie. You will use a cable tie because this makes it easy to remove the receiver later on should you want to use it in other projects. To finish the construction of the lower quadcopter frame, Add the receiver female to female jumper wires. Congratulations! The lower quadcopter frame is now fully finished. In the next video, we will start the construction of the upper quadcopter frame.